Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I wanna to talk to you guys about classes and objects in Java. I'm really pumped to talk to you guys about this because when we're talking about classes and objects, we're really getting into like the meat and potatoes of what Java can do and what makes it awesome. So in Java, we have all different types of data and there's a bunch of different ways that we can represent that data. We can use things like strings, we could use numbers like integers and doubles, or we could use things like Booleans to represent true or false values. But here's the thing, in the real world, there's a lot of things that can't be represented just using like strings or numbers. So imagine that I was, uh, for example, like creating a piece of software that managed students at a school, right? If I wanted to just define a student's major, so like a particular student's major, I could just create a variable. I could say student major, and I could set it equal to like whatever, computer science or something, right? So if I wanted to just represent, you know, the student's major, it would be really easy. I could do it using a string, but how would I represent like an actual student? You know, we have the string data type that we can use and we can give it, you know, a value of like computer science, but there's no student data type. Like how could I represent a student inside of my Java program? And the way that we can do that is we can actually use something called a class. And what a class allows you to do is it allows you to model a real world attribute inside of your program. So essentially what we're doing is we're creating our own custom data type, but it's a data type that represents like a real world entity. So I could create a data type for like my phone and I could do that by creating a phone class. I could create a data type for my credit card and I could do it by creating like a credit card class. I could create a data type for a student and I could do it by creating a student class. And when we create a class in Java, we're modeling a real world entity and we're basically giving ourselves something that we can use to represent that inside of our programs. So classes are really awesome. And if that explanation doesn't fully make sense to you right now, don't worry, it's gonna make sense as we go through this video. But for now, just know that a class is basically a way that we can define our own custom data type because there's a lot of stuff that can't be represented in just like a string or a number. So we can use classes to basically model a real world entity. So in this tutorial, I wanna create a student class. So we're gonna create a class that represents a student inside of our program. So I'm gonna come down here into my default package. And if you're using Eclipse, your setup should look similar to this. But if you're not using Eclipse, you just wanna put this class in the same directory as you know, whatever file you've been using with your main method. So I'm just gonna right click on default package and I'm just gonna click new class. And this will allow us to create a new class. So down here, we just need to give this a name. So I'm just gonna call this student. This will be our student class. And generally in Java, when you create a class, you want it to start with a capital letter, just like that. So I'm gonna come down here and click this finish button, we'll click that and Eclipse is gonna go off and create a new student class for us. And basically all this is is just a new Java file and inside here it just says public class student. So this is essentially how we can create a class in Java. So let's talk about what this is and what it's doing. Remember, we can use classes to model real world objects inside of our program. And the way that we can do that is we can create this class like overall container and inside of here we want to give this some attributes so basically i can give this a series of variables so i can use things like strings or integers or booleans to define information about a student and basically we call those attributes so they would be like the attributes of a student so over here i'm going to start creating some attributes and let's think about what are the attributes that would define like a student in a college, for example. Well, we might wanna say like first name and last name. So we can create two strings, one for first name, and we'll create another one for last name. And let's think, what else can we define about a student? Well, another thing would be GPA. So we can say, G we'll make this a double, and we could say GPA. So that would be like, you know, 2.5, 3.5, whatever. 
4.0 if you're really smart. We can also define their major. So I can say string major. And let's think, what else? We could define their age. So I could say, uh, well, I guess I could either define their birthday or their age. Just to keep it simple, why don't we just define their age as an integer? And what else? What else can we define about a student? Let's define a Boolean value. We could say like on probation. So this would basically be like true if they were on probation or false if they weren't. So this is a Boolean. All right, so what I've done is I created this student class and I've basically defined some attributes about a student. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm saying that any student inside of our program can have a first name, a last name, a GPA, a major, an age, and a on probation variable. So essentially what we're doing is we're defining a student data type and we're saying that a student inside of our program will have all of these attributes associated to it. So what I can do now is I can use this basic student class and I can create individual students. So you remember like if I wanted to create a variable in my program, I have to actually like physically create the variable and give it a value, right? So if I wanted to create a number, I'd have to be like int and you know, whatever the number, like the name, and then I'd have to like give it a value. Well, that's the same thing with these classes. You know, over here inside of this class declaration, I'm basically just defining like what a student is. I'm giving a basic template of like, here's what a student is inside of our program. But this isn't a specific student, right? If I wanted to start using this, I'd have to actually like create a student and give it all of these different values. So I'm going to show you guys how we can do that. I'm going to come over here into my program. So I'm just going back over to this app.java file. Over here in this app file, I can actually create a student. So we can actually create one of these students that we defined over in the other file. So the way that I can do that is I can basically create it like I would any other variable. So the first thing I want to do is specify the data type of the variable that I want to create. In our case, we're creating a student variable. So I can say student and then I can just give it a name. So we'll call this student like my student. And now what we want to do is we want to say equals new student and then open and close parentheses. So this is basically how we can create a new student. And what we'll have here is an empty student. So this student has no attributes associated to it. So what we want to do is we want to start giving this student some attributes. So I can basically do that by saying my student dot, and now I can access one of the attributes that we defined about the student. So I could say my student dot first name. And you remember in that my student class, we defined a first name and I could say equals. So I can just say like, we'll say Jim, and we can do the same thing for last name. So I can just copy this guy. And instead of saying first name, we'll say last name and we'll just give it a last name, Halpert. So now we're basically defining the first name and the last name for our student. And we can do the same thing for all those other attributes. So we could say my student dot major and we'll give him a major. So business. And what else did we have? So we also had um, GPA and on probation and age. So let's say that Jim Halpert's GPA, he's probably kind of a slacker. So it's just going to be equal to 2.3. And then we can say my student age 24. And finally, we'll say my student dot on probation and this can just be equal to false. So what we've basically done is we created this student and what this is called is it's called a student object. So what we defined over here in this student.java file, we defined a student class and this is basically just like a specification for what a student is in our program. So it's basically just defining like, Hey, this is like what a student is. It has a first name, a last name, a GPA, a major. It has all these different things. But when we want to create an actual student, so like when I want to create a student and like give it different values, I can create what's called an object. 
And an object is an instance of a class. In other words, an object is just like that class that actually has values inside of it. So it's like an actual student instead of just like the specification for a student. So now we actually have this Jim Halpert object who's a student in our school. So I can come down here and I can actually like print out certain attributes about this object. So I could say like my student dot first name. And now this will actually print out the first name of our student onto the screen. So let's go ahead and run this program. I'm just going to click run and you'll see over here, it's printing out the student's first name, which is Jim. I could then print out their last name. So now we should get Halpert. I could print out any of the attributes about them. So I could print out like the GPA and we'll print this out. So basically what I'm doing is I'm creating like a student data type. I'm creating my own data type and then I can create an instance of that data type or an instance of that class, which is called an object. And that's just like a particular student inside of my program. So if I wanted, I could create another student. So I could just copy this entire thing and we could just create an entirely different student down here. So we could just call it like my student two or whatever. And now we'll give this student a bunch of different attributes. So we can make it like Pam Beasley and she majors in art and maybe she has like a 2.5 GPA and she's 23 and we'll put her on probation. So now we have a, an entirely different student inside of our program. So if I wanted, I could come down here and I could access information about that student. So we could say like first name and here we're accessing that different student. So here we're getting Pam. And so the point is that I can define a student and I can like specify like what goes into a student. We have like the first name, the last name, the GPA, and then I can create instances of that student inside of my program and I can use them. So the class is this specification over here. It's just like specifying what a student is and an object is an actual like instance of that. An object is an actual student who has actual values associated to it. So that's classes and objects. This is kind of a lot to take in. And I you know if you don't fully understand what's going on, like right now, that's totally fine. Classes and objects are a, you know, sort of a more advanced topic in programming. What you want to do is play around with creating your own classes and objects. So I created this student class over here and I created student objects, which are just like individual students. Here's my challenge to you guys take an object in your everyday life. You could take like a phone or you could take a credit card or you could take a book and define a class about it. So for example, if I was defining a credit card class, I could give it like the credit card number, the expiration date, the issuer of the card, like Visa or MasterCard. You could give it a security number or I could create a class for like a book. We could say like, here's the title of the book and the author, and the number of pages. So you can create classes to model real world entities, and then you can represent them inside of your code doing stuff like this. So going forward, we're going to learn a lot more about classes. This is just scratching the surface. We're going to learn how to make these way more powerful and make it easier to create them and stuff like that. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.